Okay, we're going to move on and we're going to have a uh, panel debate. It's going to be about encouraging diversity and inclusion in a data and AI driven organization. So I welcome on stage uh, three ladies. So uh, Annette Tultorke from Scania, Petronella Posti from Solita, Anna Romboli from NetEnt. Very welcome. Thank have a seat, Thank please. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, so we're just going to start off with a uh, short uh, presentation. So if you would like to start, Petronella. Yes, hi. Uh, my name is Petronella Posti. I work at Solita. Solita is a data company or consultancy working with data in a very broad context. Everything from uh, strategies to cloud-based uh, data platforms, like <laughs> you mentioned. So from, <laughs> from the lake to the cloud, <laughs> that's what we do. And work a lot with AI and machine learning uh, and changing the world into more data-driven with right ethic rules, of course. My role at Solita uh, is, uh, uh, is being a director for our Scandinavian countries. So Sweden, Norway and Denmark are under my, my wings. Uh, I recruit a lot. My personal goal and our company goal here in Scandinavia is to gain the 50-50% uh, or the 50-50 balance between male, female or whatever genders there are and, uh, and different kind of uh, backgrounds and diversity because we work also a lot with innovation and that's really important for us. But a lot different kinds of things from, <laughs> from lake to cloud and everything in between, <laughs> let's say so. Yeah. Thank you. Anna? Yeah, so I'm Anna Rombley, I'm the Chief Communications Officer at NetEnt. Um, we, uh, we are a game development company and also a platform supplier to the gaming industry. Uh, so I've been working a lot with internal and external communications and branding and also developing uh, the innovation platform for NetEnt, how we work with innovation, a little bit like Nina uh, Imina just talked about. So that's me. Yes. Annette? Yeah, I'm Annette Hultåker. <coughs> I work at Concept Developer for Advanced Analytics at Scania, the truck and bus manufacturer in Södertälje have a background as analyst within uh, research and development for 10 years, and then I joined Scania IT uh, a year ago to work with this concept development, which could be education, recruitment, uh, anything within that area. Very interesting. So, um, okay, let's uh, kick off. So I think we need to sort of uh, set the basis here so we have a common ground on what we mean by diversity and inclusion. Anyone want to sort of give a definition? I know we're going to have a presentation in the afternoon from a <laughs> sort of specialist within recruiting uh, in this area, but what are your view? Anyone want to... What do we mean by diversity and inclusion? Yeah. Di diversity for me uh, means that we have people in a safe environment and inclusion as well, if we kind of mush everything together. <laughs> uh, so I think that's really important to have people from different backgrounds, different experiences, different kind of lengths of ages and careers, uh, giving everybody the kind of a safe environment to be able to express them their kind of ambitions and ideas freely. Uh, uh, and that kind of the safety and that kind of inclusion uh, and creating that kind of environment is kind of the key for me uh, in everything in order to kind of accelerate and, and kind of bring out the best in people uh, and get everything going. Yeah. Yeah, I, I totally <laughs> agree. Uh, from from an, like an employee perspective, it's really where you where you feel that you're never held back in any way um, regarding it could be gender or ethnic ethnicity, ethnicity yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or um, uh, different types of um, yeah. Yeah. so it's not uh, we can agree then it's not only about gender right so no. definitely it's a bro much broader perspective yes yeah, yeah we can see that some of this um, yeah if we leave gender aside, but some of this other diversity is happening quite rapidly in this branch um, now by itself. Uh, for example, culture broadens. Uh, I haven't still had a, um, a diploma worker, master thesis students that uh, comes from Sweden. Uh, they're generally from all over the world coming to Sweden and want to work here. Mm. Uh, feeling this is a country which gives um, possibilities to everyone. So this is happening by itself. Uh, but it brings challenges, which yeah. I think we will yeah. 
um, talk to yeah. you later. So <laughs> maybe uh, this is stating the obvious, but um, I think we should uh, sort of touch upon the why is this important? Some of the benefits. Why do we want to achieve this? Why is it so, so important? I think there are some obvious uh, benefits. Um, uh, going back to innovation, uh, I think uh, diversity is really key for innovation because if everybody in is kind of coming from the same angle, you would solve problems very kind of uh, narrow. Uh, you would probably not even be able to identify the real challenges within the problem if you're too um, much alike each other. So having a diverse, like, uh, and sol problem solving uh, group, I think, is is really important. Yeah. So that's one. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. And and we discussed a little bit on the on the backstage. And of course, my kind of ambition and, and our passion is data. And when I think about kind of the uh, future so far, and or so far what we have been doing is kind of male dominated, so white male dominated structures and whatever that we have created. And now kind of the next era of data where we're going to also utilize artificial intelligence and, and machine learning and algorithms. And if all of these algorithms are done by a homogeneous group of people, we're actually going to create the problem again. So we're going to have a homogeneous uh, way of thinking thinking and promoting things. Uh, so I think it's even more important now in the next era of, of data or this era that we are actually living at the moment already. Yeah. Yeah, we see that in, in product manufacture, where Scania, we, our core product is to produce trucks and buses. And there we have the customers, the drivers, the users, you are using the buses and so on. Then we, we must think about uh, that the, the customer is a diverse group, and if you don't do that, you lose on um, yeah, business opportunities. And it's the same thing applies to services and, and the, the software products. Maybe not that obvious as with hardware products, but mm. yeah, it is the same. Yeah. And of course, if we, if we target all of the different groups of people, we will have a much broader talent pool to recruit from as well which is uh, extremely important uh, for tech companies today because yeah. it's so difficult to find a huge uh, lack of uh, skills yes. on the market. Yeah. So we need to look on a broader perspective as well yeah. uh, just because of that. Uh, so you mentioned a bit about challenges. So what are some of the major challenges uh, that we see in this area? Yeah, apart from, from trying to find the right um, mm -hmm. persons, as you just <coughs> mentioned, um, that that's it's a very hard challenge today, not mm -hmm. at least with the um, boosted economy that we have had in Sweden. But I also see when we have a diverse, when we're starting to accomplish a diverse um, workforce, you encounter problems with that. You have different views, for example, on male, female roles, cultural roles, uh, and, and such, um, that you... you uh, yeah, bring in uh, other culture views uh, that maybe we feel a little bit old-fashioned, but then all of a sudden you have to, to tackle them within your own organization. Uh, so I feel that that is a challenge um, uh, sometimes. Yeah, when I have recruited the right people, then maybe they have problem working together in the end, or uh, have views on like supporting staff or uh, things like that, that um, you have a sort of a bad... Um, yeah, we'll call it uh, not feeling, but yeah, the, the, the you're not working together. Everyone working mm. at companies not working together because you have different views of different people. <coughs> and one of Scania's core value is respect for the individual, independent on who you are and what you work with. So that is something that we strive for every day. Mm. Yeah. And also, uh, one of the big challenges is really to have um, senior management on board. Um, from my experience, I, I really think it's extremely important uh, to have the, like the group CEO uh, and the senior management team. Because if you don't, uh, there will be lots of good things happening, but you will never really have it like, throughout the whole organization as a, as a focus or as, uh, as a priority. So that's something I think um, needs lots of work and and uh, engagement uh, to make that happen. Yeah. So yeah. buy-in on mm. each level of the company. Yeah. Yes. And if if we look at kind of the um, 
the challenge side as well from the how, for example, the data uh, <laughs> we're in this data conference now or the tech kind of roles have been described in the marketplace. So we are not really kind of maybe attracting the right female audience because the female kind of skilled people are out there. And I think the kind of stereotypy that is kind of, uh, is linked to the tech jobs is totally wrong. Uh, we also see that uh, women who are really talented joining the IT groups and, and working with technology and, and, uh, and uh, roles in that. So usually when they quit, so do you know what they do? They actually start up their own companies they go to uh, non-profit organizations or uh, join uh, startups. And this is something that, kind of <laughs> pointing out to your uh, previous comment of the culture and how we treat kind of people in their work. So we see this still there is a problem to kind of advance or, or get the attention uh, in this kind of male-dominated environment. Even though you're good, so maybe you don't get appreciated because the cultural the st structures are so kind of uh, designed for the for the kind of in a traditional way and i think that's kind of a uh, mm -hmm. a big issue which is also kind of getting people or or women uh, to to choose other uh, trainings and uh, educations than IT nowadays. And there we need to tackle this problem from early stages, from the very elementary schools and so on, and start from there, because it's, it's going down from the beginning of 90s for, from 36% 36 uh, 36 of women uh, educating themselves in the IT area, going down to 16% of today, which is, totally wrong direction if we think how much tech there is kind of applied to everything nowadays. So it's a scary development. Mm. Yeah, and then again, it's not that difficult. And even like um, industrial <laughs> dinosaurs like Scania, which have a, it's a yeah. production company with a, a sort of a male inheritance uh, being yeah, in a production environment. But I have a very sweet uh, story from about 10 years ago. Uh, uh, a colleague of mine, we, we it turned out to be colleagues for a very long time, um, she was fresh out of, of the university, uh, heavily pregnant and applied for a position at Scania. And she was interviewed by the, uh, this aged male uh, age uh, responsibility. And throughout the interview, he didn't mention her pregnancy at all. And then by the end of the interview, she felt that maybe I should at least bring this up somehow, how we should <laughs> arrange. <laughs> and so she said, I, you, as you see, I'm... I'm Pregnant. And then he just looked at her and said, well, it's a passing condition, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we perfect. want you in here. Uh, I'm recruiting you. And yeah, you'll have the baby and then you come back and work here. And I think that's one of the best recruitments Scania have done. She's an extremely clever woman. And um, I've been honored to be her colleague for uh, nine years. Hmm? Yeah. That's great. Yeah, and we, we also mentioned briefly just before that um, how we can get more uh, women uh, into our industry is really also to start much earlier because we, in companies, we talk about that we should have a close collaboration with, with schools and university and so on, but actually then it's a bit too late because you've already kind of decided your track if you're in, an, in university. So I think we need to start really uh, much, much earlier uh, in primary schools and, and kind of talk about um, tech in a different, in a totally different way that is not designed by men and uh, in a language or, or in a way. So we, we get more women interested and, yeah. and girls to really understand that this is something to be curious about and yes. explore. Definitely. I, I totally agree. I do uh, a lot of recruitment of consultants and I find it very difficult uh, to, to sort of get women enthusiastic about this area. Um, and it uh, all goes back to there are not as many uh, females attending uh, university, IT, engineering, 
um, uh, courses and programs, and I think that's a huge problem. So I, I totally agree we should do uh, start earlier. Um, and coming back to what I mentioned uh, during sort of the first 10, mi 10 minutes of this conference is the data literacy part of it. So we are now teaching kids in grade school to do math, read, write, sort of the basic foundations. And I think uh, just understanding bits and pieces of data should, should be just as important. Uh, it is today and it will be in the future as well. So, but it's a hard one to tackle because I agree that when companies do collaborations, they do it with universities to sort of promote themselves yeah. for the, the, the uh, students that are about to finish uh, their studies. But we need to sort of start much earlier uh, to paint the picture that this is a uh, possible area. Um, yes. Yeah. So, um, so anything else around challenges and things that you have done to overcome sort of those challenges? Uh, you mentioned, for example, um, bringing in new team members and it's hard to, in the beginning, to make everyone work as a team. I think that's, that's always a bit difficult, right? To, to create new teams, bring in new members. Uh, but you're sort of implying that it's even more difficult when there are different cultural backgrounds and so Yeah, we forth. see it. Not, uh, not necessarily within the team. I am one of my team members. <laughs> 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 but the general, uh, Scania IT in general is, is growing very rapidly. So we're bringing in people literally from all over the world and then you uh, very fast. So uh, onboarding on, um, on, the, on the Scania culture, uh, which is very much influenced on the Swedish culture, inclusion, respect for the individual, uh, that is not an, e not, not an easy task. Uh, but we also have a sort of a non-blaming culture. So if, if you do something that is not correct, you, of course you might, if it's very severe, then you might have a, a private chat with a manager, but you try to sort of lift the whole organization also, not, not blaming the individual, but try to bring everybody to a new, new way of working, uh, new ways of agreeing on things. Um, yeah. we, we generally have rather flat organizations in Sweden, um, so le the leadership issue might be dif uh, difficult for some uh, people to catch on. How do you, <laughs> yeah, how do you make decisions in your organization? So, yeah. And I can also briefly mention that um, within NetEnd, we've been we ha we have set uh, like a clear goal for for uh, the gender balance um, ambition. So it's more a vision to be 50-50 by 2020. And the way we uh, reasoned was that if we work with gender balance, the whole diversity. Um, kind of package will follow <laughs> much easier. That, uh, that's uh, what uh, people with m more experience than our company uh, at least say. So we um, we set that uh, a very high uh, ambitious goal, and then we realized that there are some pockets within the organization where we have difficulty getting buy-in for for gender balance, uh, and uh, we worked a lot with uh, information and, and like research, showing them what type of research has been done and so on and so forth. And it worked to a certain extent, but there were still some areas where we could clearly see that uh, we couldn't really get through. So uh, the thing we're now kind of uh, launching is more accountability for all managers. So we uh, will get a clearer feedback on how each team is actually doing in terms of gender balance. So since we have the goal of 50-50, we can really measure where we are in different groups and teams uh, uh, from that perspective. So you do measure it? So we ab absolutely, we measure it. We measure it in, in, in that sense, but we also measure it um, through like quarterly staff uh, surveys where uh, inclusion uh, uh, is always part of the kind of questionnaire, um, the battery of questions. Uh, but the, I think the key is then the personal accountability. So all managers within the company will know their kind of ratio and how they are performing versus other teams in terms of gender balance. And we haven't really launched it yet, so it's going to be really interesting to see if that's kind of what would kind of change the, the needle all the way. Yes. <laughs> so we'll see. Yeah, but I think that's good because uh, everything that you usually measure, we are that kind of animals. <laughs> so when you see your results, so you're kind of steered by that. And I think they kind of the accountability is a, is a, is a great mm -hmm. thing as well. Mm -hmm. um, 
uh, and it's needed. It's mm. needed when you do a change because this is a big transformation and not only in the structures but also in the culture and the way of thinking and so on. And as we are working in a new way in a world that is tiny, tiny, tiny now, everybody knows everybody and we're working in a global environment. So, so the structures that we have in our companies and the cultures, they are not really working anymore. <laughs> so it's, it's, uh, we're talking about quite large uh, change in everything in our kind of the, the cozy world that we had back then. I don't know how cozy it was really, but <laughs> 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 I like it better now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <coughs> uh, yeah. Can I jump, add one yeah, more sure. thing? Uh, we paint a little bit black picture here when it comes to, to recruiting uh, females, for example, but I haven't found that that difficult, mm. actually, but a very large proportion of the, the women that I encounter, or more or less everybody, uh, doesn't ori originate from Sweden. We have um, mainly people from Asia, China, India, Southeast Asia, and I have some um, talented colleague here with their ancestry in the Middle East. So uh, I like the... Maybe mm -hmm. it's uh, something wrong in the mm -hmm. Swedish school system earlier on because we find the uh, talented women that we meet uh, and really want to bring on. Uh, they come from other parts of the world, but have have uh, yeah, at some point in life come to Sweden and, and want to remain here because we have yeah. a, a good good culture, working yeah. culture with diversity here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so we're talking about challenges, and I agree. It's it's like we're painting this um, sort of dark picture that is uh, challenging and it's hard. Um, but wouldn't you agree that we're better off than a lot of other industries? Like just being in the tech industry, and there's a lack of skills. We're sort of forced to look on a broader perspective. We can't be that picky. It's yeah. just if we do find the skills, wherever they come from or whatever gender, it sort of it helps us being sort of forward leaning. Yeah. Or, or what do you think? I I don't know really because being a tech company in Stockholm today is <laughs> like <laughs> we too many. <laughs> yes, it's too many companies really competing for the same type of competence. Uh, so we also we have people kind of relocating from all over the world to, to join Netent. Uh, yeah, that's and that's another challenge. <laughs> it's a huge challenge to yeah. really find talents and, yeah. uh, and then also to, to keep them because it's so competitive. Uh, yeah. But I think in the sort of, it's a po positive thing, right? Mm. We, we want to do that. I know other industries which are much more traditional, yeah. like the, the structures are sort of, uh, they're there. It's, I, believe they're going to be there for another 20 years yeah. and not the willingness to even be open to yeah. change. Um, no, but I, and I also really agree because I think the, the challenge we have to find um, fine talent also makes our companies more diverse by nature. So yeah. we have people from, I think it's like 50 nationalities uh, awesome. in Ednetet. <laughs> uh, so when you enter our office here in Stockholm, in Vasagatan, uh, you wouldn't really kind of understand that you're in, in Sweden. Yeah. And then also we, I think uh, women and, and also like people from all, all over the world, you would feel more included uh, compared to yeah. some more kind of old, maybe older <laughs> traditional uh, industries. So yeah. definitely in that yeah. sense. Yeah. Okay, so um, a, a very hot topic about hiring uh, these talents. So how does diversity <laughs> affect employee hiring? Um, so it would be great to hear some of your, uh, if you could share your thoughts on, on what you do when you try to recruit people. Yeah, I think kind of the uh, the culture perspective, how is your company culture and so on. For us, it has been a kind of a golden card. Uh, we work in a very kind of... Uh, flat hierarchy. We have autonomous teams that really are there and we believe in something that it's called teal organization theory. Uh, so and that's kind of a modern way of thinking and at the same time we're over 750 consultants living in this kind of a mess <laughs> without these kind of hierarchical structures and looking for example for if we focus on women again and and so on and uh, different kinds of cultures. So it's a for people who tend to kind of leave the companies to establish their own or going to a startup. So we're trying to kind of create this 
creative uh, environment for everybody uh, to come and that has been our kind of a hit card here here in Sweden and in other, other countries as well where we are located uh, and I think that's kind of a really important thing it's not only kind of the things that you're going to do but it's such a uh, large part of your life to be in your work and it has to mix with the, your needs and your life situation as well so you need to be quite flexible because we know how life is. It's not kind of a straightforward line, but there are different kinds of ups and downs and you need to schedule and so on. Just to kind of give people the possibility to, to join the group and, and be a part of something where they can also kind of develop their own skills and still kind of maintain a good kind of, a, it's an it's a entire life just to maintain the whole thing. <laughs> So I think that's really important to create that kind of a uh, structure and so on. And I think also we need to kind of be more active. I love this event. I think it's great to be here <laughs> with the women in data. This is exactly an example that we need to, to see others uh, have a little bit of role models to, to kind of to take the step uh, and start talking to your networks and so on. Uh, we're talking a lot with the female engineers at the, at the moment, going uh, kind of hanging with them <laughs> and trying to kind of tell about what we're doing and what you can do with data and how the kind of future looks like. But I think that it's in the culture and in the way of working and, and creating something new, uh, some, some way of kind of living your work and working your <laughs> <laughs> through your life, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. mm. And I think from a recruitment perspective, um, so we're very, I think it's especially important since we have this goal of 50-50 by 2020, we're very clear that we're always recruiting um, the, the most kind of suitable and talented person. So no one should ever feel that I got this job because I'm a woman, mm. because then you kind of fail in your recruitment process if you have women feeling that way. So, but what we uh, what we do say uh, is that we really need to have a diverse um, candidate pool. So, if we, for example, work with external recruiters, uh, if they all only present men, we ask them to kind of go back and and do their job a little bit more thorough and present uh, a more. Uh, gender balanced uh, pool of candidates and that means it sometimes takes longer so mm. time is uh, something that you need to um, have uh, and we also try different things to you know when you read different s like CVs that you you take away name uh, and gender so you don't know if it's a man if it's a man or if it's a mm. woman mm. Uh, or w from what nationality and so on mm. and also we have had Women, we tested actually uh, for, for roles where we had difficulties uh, getting women to apply. Uh, we tested to have women writing the adverts, yeah. but it actually didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we didn't get more women to apply for the job. So, but so it's like those kinds of things that you yeah, can you're explore. You're being very creative, right? Yes. Yeah, you're trying out things. Yeah. Yes. Yep. I try ex continue exploring that last word. And I heard a couple of weeks ago at Scania that one uh, manager uh, decided to write the, the, uh, an uh, advert in a complete new way. Mm. Um, I think it was more, not a traditional way describing uh, things you should do, but more goal-oriented or something like that. And I think he ended up with a majority of, of female oh. applicants, which mm -hmm. he was looking for because there was a, an imbalance in, mm. in that uh, part of the organization. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Continue experimenting mm. with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah, and having, uh, having yeah. different sort of uh, ways into the company. Uh, traditional adverts when you're looking for uh, somebody for a free position. Maybe open uh, advertisements, uh, summer workers, um, master thesis students and, and so on. So different ways in and, and, and try mm -hmm. to, to catch the talents when you meet them. And I think a really uh, a good uh, advice is also like use the networks of the women you already have within the company yeah. because that's also when you get the yeah. snowball effect so uh, and then you get more women in and then you get a broader network and so on and so forth. I think that's a really good kind of uh, because I, I love that idea because we have been uh, there has been so little positions open 
for women uh, in the past. And now the situation is changing, even though we would like to kind of accelerate that. But I think it's really important for us kind of uh, to learn to work as a team. And if you yourself get promoted for a great job, remember always to take your kind of your <laughs> network of women with you and help them along the way as well and push them up as well. Because as a team, we have such kind of a great uh, possibilities to succeed because by yourself, you're going to be alone and it's, it's a very lonely world out there. So I think we need to work this kind of a work as a team and, and find this kind of a power in that and appreciate uh, each other's kind of different skill sets and so on and just push your kind of female colleagues because we are a minority. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that we work together mm -hmm. as a team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so what about roles and responsibilities available in data organizations? And what can we do to encourage women to apply for these kinds of jobs? <laughs> are there any like particular roles that are better suited than others or should be attractive to women? Or I have to say that <laughs> I got a little bit offended by that question, actually, <laughs> when I saw that. I was like, excuse me now. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, we're people, we're everybody's uh, a person, and we ha all have different kinds of skill sets. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there is female or male uh, work. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think we are all suited uh, in uh, different roles and whatever career orientation we want to wants to have. So uh, I, I would kind of, uh, <laughs> yeah, promote this kind of all of our kind of uh, positions, at least to everybody <laughs> to apply, uh, whether you come from whatever background you come from and, and so on. So I, I think we have all kind of different kinds of talents. So <laughs> Do you agree? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I fully agree. <laughs> but we, I think also we should um, we have these different skill sets, and sometimes yeah. I, I think we a little bit demand that women should be uh, sort of a jack of all trades, should, should have every. We demand very much, uh, whereas men sometimes get away with not knowing stuff or <laughs> not being good in, a, in some. So letting uh, uh, yourself and your colleagues, uh, independent of who they are, uh, have their strengths but also their weaknesses and ad, um, sort of acknowledge that and don't expect them to do stuff that they're not good at. Uh, let them do the stuff that they're, they're, that they're, they're good at and, and leave the other ones out. I'm horrible with visualization and, and everybody <laughs> I've worked with is very well aware of that. And just <laughs> somebody else handles that. I, I don't generally do the presentations and things. So, yeah. um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We all have those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but That's again, good. also connecting back to how do we get uh, women to become interested in, in the roles. And I totally agree <laughs> that there is no really specific roles. It's more on a personal level uh, what you yeah. are suited for and not. So, But again, like... The, going back to the younger generations and not only focus on university, but rather like 10 years, 10 year old girls, yeah. those should be kind of feel that they are comfortable and at home within, within tech and data and uh, feel yeah. like it's a natural part of life because we've always talked about it as something a bit strange, a bit difficult a bit like it's it's um distanced yeah from the like everyday life yeah. and i think that's has been a big problem yeah and i think it's about communicating and letting the the, the young people in school know about what kind of kinds of jobs are out there yeah. um because uh, at least from my point of view um i did have sort of a technical background going back to um, when I was in high school, but I was still sort of afraid uh, and a bit scared because I didn't know what kind of jobs were out there. Uh, so it was uh, not until that I tried it hands-on and realized, okay, I can work close to the business, I can make an impact and use my interest in math, for example. Um, so I think we have a huge communication job to mm. do. Um, I totally and role agree. models, we talked about that earlier yeah. before coming on stage, yeah. about role models, how yeah. important isn't that? Yeah. Um. Mm. Definitely, and uh, I think the more we can also explain that it, it, it's becoming more and more close to our like 
the ordinary life we yeah. live, not but make it difficult and distant. Exactly, and yeah. not something for like complex businesses. It's also like with all the digitalization going on, it's soon going to be everywhere yeah. <laughs> in, in everything <laughs> we do. And yeah. So I think that's really important. Yeah. So we have uh, time for uh, maybe one more question. So. Um, there's someone asking from the audience, so if there are any active or passive steps you can take to create a diverse and inclusive organization besides hiring the right people? Like, is there something we can do? Difficult question, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's a... Uh, I think you need to have a little bit of extra effort. Because, uh, as I said, this is, a, like you said, the measurements. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to have more active kind of female groups within company as well and and driving a little bit of this um, because to get something going you need to be a little bit over the top you need to do <laughs> a little bit extra like crazy extra <laughs> <laughs> to get get things changing and moving so i think we need to have more activity uh within kind of the females who are already in the companies to get them together to do some fun stuff or or challenging stuff or whatever but just to kind of be more present, be more visible, and that you can kind of gain together. So it starts somewhere from there, I think. Uh, that's just kind of something that I have been thinking a lot, how we could be kind of more visible within the companies, outside of the company, and so on, just to make a little bit more noise uh, uh, and feel the kind of our, our kind of <coughs> coherent power. <laughs> and I also think it's uh, important to realize that it's not going to happen by itself. No. Like you really, as you say, you, mm. you really need to work with, with those questions to improve the situation in the company and also to kind of foster the culture and make it a natural part uh, of the culture. So as soon as you kind of lean back and feel that now we're on the right track and things <laughs> look good, then it quite fast kind of start going in the wrong direction. So you need to be on top of things and, and work with it actively. Yeah. yeah, and have a, a corporate culture that that um, uh, includes this, foster this um, on all levels, in the in a group where you work, but also all the way up in, in management. Um, if the, the everyday work, um, if you don't have respect for, for the individual and who they are, then um, people uh, that doesn't fit the, the, the norm in the company will, will leave it rather soon. And you need to have the, the support up until the top management, otherwise um, people will get, get stuck in the organization who uh, hit the, the glass roof if you're not um, fitting the norm there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so thank you uh, very much. Very inspiring to hear about some really creative and um, uh, a clear vision of what you want to achieve in your companies. Um, very inspiring. So thank you for sharing that. So thank you, Annette from Scania, Petronella from Solita, and Anna from Netent. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah.